Hello and welcome back to our tutorial series where we're explaining Unreal Engine 5, especially how to use blueprinting. Hopefully build an understanding of blueprinting and make you more independent with it. So in the last episode, we talked a bit about the blueprint communication between different actors. And we touched on a slightly about inheritance. And in this episode, we're going to go through that a lot more uh, in a lot more detail and explain why it's so important in handling that communication between blueprints. Let's jump in and take a look at what's going on. So inheritance is the core concept of all object-oriented programming. It is the idea that everything is in a child of something else. In this case, everything that's placed into a world is a child of actor. Everything uh, that isn't everything, though, not just actors, uh, are children of objects. So object is the top level of uh, things that can be uh, created. And then we have actors which are, can be instantiated or things that can be instanced in your world. So anything that you can drag into the world and spawn in, these are actors. And then there's subchildren of actors as well, already built into the engine. So for example, this over here, this cube here, as you can see in the outline as a static mesh actor, and it has a static mesh component. Okay, so actors are just uh, children of, uh, all these are just children of actor. And these have their own components, which what make up actors. Okay, so how we communicate between one another is, well, a lot of the time we are dealing with inheritance to help us achieve this. So let's say, for example, in this first person template, we've got our first person character. Okay, and the first person character here, as you can see on the top right, is a child of the parent class character. Character is a child class of pawn, and pawn is a child class of actor. And each of those have their own unique special variables, functions, components, and so on. And on the character, you can see which ones are inherited because they have this sort of edit in C++, and also uh, they, they, you can't change anything about these. So you can't like reorder them about or anything like that. You can change their individual settings over on the right, but you can't move them about and things. And that's because they are inherited, okay? And the ones that aren't inherited are, don't have really anything next to them. They are just the first-person camera and the first-person mesh. And these can be moved. So the character class is special because it comes with a character movement component, which is slowly getting replaced with the mover component in probably later versions of Unreal, like probably 5.6 or maybe 5.7 even. But um, the character class, as it is in this version 5.5, is uh, the base class that we use for all our characters because it has this character movement component, which handles a lot of movement stuff, saves us a lot of work in making a character move around on the screen. Now, what's unique about this, though, is because it is a character, it also has some unique properties to it, too. And so if I go to class defaults over here, you can see a lot of these unique properties coming up as well. So not only do you get all the variables from, say, the uh, character movement co component and first-person mesh component, but you also get ones that are dedicated to the actual class itself. So, for example, the um, jump uh, max count, where it is the yeah, character, is jump max hold time, jump max counts. These are character-specific, so it's in the character section, uh, for this class. And it also comes with its own functions as well. If you go to the functions and go to override, you can see which functions came from which actor. Uh, so we've got oh, which, which class rather. So actor begin curse rover is an actor event or function. And can jump is a character based function. And you can see here which ones we are different. And you can see here possessed the pawn one, received, uh, received restarted uh, is a pawn of a pawn and unpossessed is pawn as well. So it can be worthwhile whenever you're building a new uh, actor inherited from another class is to have a look at the functions override and see what functions already exist on this class. That way it gives you a better idea of understanding what it can and can't do. So as you can see here, we've got lots of stuff we can mess about with regarding the character's movement as well as its possession. But what might be more beneficial for you when you make your own game is to make your own class thing okay so rather than having this bp first person character be the main character you may prefer to have this 
as a different character class. Okay, so if I go into blueprint class here, use character, and I call it character base, for example. This I could indicate as being like the base class of all my characters. Now, what's the benefit of doing that? Well, let's say every character in my game is going to have a health associated to it. Okay, so I can go to variables and I can add a health. And that'd be a float, typically. And we'll set it to value of one. Okay, so this is a character class, just value one. Now, functionally, I'm not going to do anything on the event graph or anything like that. I'm just going to set up the variables and possibly event functions for this uh, to handle for all the characters the game has. But then I want my first person character here to be a child of that, because at the moment it's still just a child of the character class. So these two, the character base and the first person character, are what we call siblings. Okay, they have the same parent, but are not related to each other otherwise. I'm going to change that around. On the first person character, I'm going to go to class settings. I'm going to change the parent class here to my character base. So we can go to BP character base. And hit compile and save. Now, at the moment, nothing looks drastically different. The only thing noticeably different is the top right, we have BP character base now as the parent class. But if I go to class defaults over here, I can search for health. And you can see health now is now a core element of this character. This is super useful as it means now I don't have to worry about putting health on individual characters. I can just make it work for those things too. And likewise, functionality wise, I can put the functionality that is shared with all the characters onto the parent class as well. So for example, damage is quite important. So I can go to character base. And we can use the damage event for any damage. And this is going to handle any damage that comes in. So I'm taking like health variable and subtract damage and set the health up there. Okay. Now, because I've got this function on the character base, the first person character has inherited this behavior. So this will happen. It will just happen. And I can prove that if I go and do, let's say, do a tick event and print string the health variable. I'm going to change it to zero seconds so I don't get a span of it on the screen. And when I hit the one key, I'm going to uh, apply damage to myself. Actor self base damage point one. So now it says one up there. I hit one key, so it's gone down now 0 0.9. Now notice I didn't do any damage code on the actual first person character, I only did it on the character base. It's just inherited that behavior. This could be very useful because a lot of your characters probably have very similar behaviors and traits. So another thing you might have is like the character's name. Yeah, if it's an NPC, for example, you can play a character, you can indicate the name of it. And we'll say the name is a text value. And because I've put name on there now, if you compile, go back to first one of the character, we will see name as part of our options here. Okay. And this is exactly the same for functionality too. So when we're doing functions, you can override them. And also with events, you can override these too. So let's say when the uh, all characters will take damage, but our player character, when I take damage, we can uh, do something to that damage before we actually take away the health. Okay, So we want to do something to it. So what I can do is I can override the any damage function. I do any damage. And you can see it here being implemented by the character base. I'll do that. And if I leave it like this, it's basically overriding what exists in the character base class. So that way, I can make it do something completely different than its parent. But in this case, I just want to modify the damage based upon a stat the player may have or buffs the player may have. In which case, I can do the damage here, multiply this by a stat, let's do damage reduction. And we'll just have this set to... 
and set that to like 0.05. Okay, and actually, let's do uh, 0 0.8. There you go. So 80% damage reduction. So I put that in there, multiply it by damage, and then I'm going to carry on with the rest of the code that's in the character base. And the way I do that is if I right click on my event any damage and add call the parent function. I could plug this in here and then hook up all the nodes that are the same. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically intercepting it, doing something to it, and then telling it to carry on with its parent functionality. Okay, we call this extending. This is extending the functionality, extending the function. Now, my player character will take different types of damage based upon that damage reduction. And this is the sort of thinking you have to think about when you're building anything is like how are things related to each other? And you eventually pick up good trip, uh, like tips and tricks. So for example, character, a character based class, which can be used for all your characters is a great start, but you can also apply it to other things too. You can have like a base actor class, a base physics actor class. And these things can all react differently based upon what you're doing with game design. But it's a good idea to think about the game design you're trying to do first before you jump into the programming. It helps you plan out a little bit ahead of time of where you want things to actually go. Hopefully that's helped to understand what inheritance is all about and why we are uh, key to, keen to use it in all of our programming. It makes things a lot easier to manipulate, change and grow beyond just making individual bespoke actors. There's more to this as well when it comes to referencing and casting, but we're going to do that in a later video. Next video, I'm going to tackle some things like variables and functions and what we actually do with that, like how to know when something should be an event and what versus when should it be a function. So we're going to tackle that in the next episode. Feel free to watch that over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lelly. But you can donate just $1 a month and get access to that video, plus many others, all before anyone else. Massive thank you to all our Patreon members for their continued support in the channel. Thank you for watching and make sure you're subscribed. Cheers, see you next time.